Hey guys, it's Sarah Young from Minus Matters, and today I'm going to know all about how to use essential oils safely and effectively for our kiddos and for our babies. Now, I've been using essential oils for around two years now at the shooting of this video, and I really got into them intentionally after I had my son, where I was looking for natural, safe, gentle options for him. And so I've really become, um, we use them for everything now for him, and I wouldn't know how to really like uh, go about day-to-day -day life, I think, without them now. I have them in my like purse, and my diaper bag, and things like that, and in my car, and they're just there because I know things happen and so I kind of know my son now and I know what comes up and so I keep those correlating oils with me and it just makes my life so much easier. So we're going to get into that a little bit now, how I actually use them, how a lot of moms use them, and get go over some different questions that come up when it comes to this, okay? Uh, so first off, thanks for being here so much. Hello, welcome. If you don't know who I am, my name is Sarah Young, and I'm the creator of My Nest Matters, which is a natural motherhood lifestyle living vlog, and I'm just so excited you're here. So thanks for joining us. Um, now, um, getting into essential oils. So really, I had no intention of using them. I wasn't really into them until I had my son. And this is Wesley here and you know, he was the reason that I got into him, like I said. And I'm sure that you're really the same way as well, where, you know, maybe you're at that point in your journey too, where you're like, I'm just, I'm over all of this like synthetic junk and never knowing what's safe, never knowing what's like going to work. You know, with every moment of motherhood, it's a new part of our journey, right? And so something comes up and it's like literally every other month, right? Like some other thing comes up that we have to figure out how to navigate. And with it, because it's time consuming, it's stressful, um, it's exhausting and it's very frustrating sometimes, especially when we don't know what to use to help our kids feel better. Um, it could be something as simple as like temper tantrums or cuts or boo-boos or something more serious like a fever or something. And when these things come up, it like kind of hits to the core of us and we're like, okay, how are we going to approach this? What are we going to do? And so understand that, you know, I can't like tell you exactly how to do and what to do with your kids. You need to be the deciding factor on that. But take this information that you take, you use to, or that I'm giving you today and use it to kind of be a launching pad to what could work and then figure out what your truth is and how you want to use it. Okay. So, um, you know, I'm going to go over a couple of the different oils that we use to kind of help kind of give ideas. Okay, so one of the things might be um, breathing it in, like through a diffuser or something like that. So I've talked about diffusers before. We use this for bedtime routine. He'll actually put in some like lavender, actually. So he'll take things like frankincense or um, lavender. He'll put a couple drops in there. It'll be part of that routine and it'll help calm him down. Then I'll take the lavender and I'll put it on the bottoms of his feet. And that will help get into his system that way and calm him down further. Bedtime routine has been something really challenging for us. And so essential oils has really helped with that, not only for him, but for me as well. My brain is racing sometimes and I can't calm down. My husband, he's in the military sometimes a stressful environment so essential oils have been in a huge part that we don't go to bed at night without using and when we don't use them we notice a difference in our sleep and how fast we fall asleep um, and so when it comes to our son you might hear things like oh my gosh you wouldn't use essential oils on your kids or how do I use it that it's safe so I actually been using oils long enough now that there are times where I use it where it's just straight Something like lavender that's very gentle. But there are other times where, especially in the beginning when I started using essential oils, I would dilute them down with a carrier oil. So jojoba, um, almond oil, those are some of my favorites. You use coconut oil is another one of my favorites. And I would take it and take a chunk of it, whatever you feel comfortable. There isn't really any right or wrong thing. You'll see things going around the internet that are like, you use this perfect amount with this perfect amount of essential oil, and that's the only way to make it safe. And understand that it's some of that is just like, is from different schools of thought. And really, if you're using a therapeutic, pure grade oil, I shouldn't have to really worry about that too much. But I get it. I understand. I'm the way, it was the same way in the beginning. So I would dilute it down really, really heavily, uh, probably overly diluted when I first started using them on him. And then later I would use, I've gone to the point where I use a, dip, a, a smaller amount. Really, if you use about a dime size, quarter size amount with a drop of oil, that's perfect amount. So we would put it on the bottoms of his feet. Um, and so another thing could be for immune system boosting support. So that's thieves oil. So thieves oil, I would actually take and I would, um, sorry, phone call was coming in. That was funny. Uh, that was awkward. Uh, so with these oil, I would put on the bottoms of his feet for immune system stuff. So if cold and flu season's coming, if he's going to be at the kid's gym, if he's going to be around a lot of other kids, if we're going to be traveling, I'll take these oil and put it on the bottoms of his feet the same way I would do with like lavender. And I would do that for myself as well. I do that for my husband. And um, uh, so when we do that, it's actually going in supporting preventative type wellness to boost our immune system to not get sick as much. Now, 
know, we do that with food, with supplements as well. But when it comes to babies and oils and kids, like that makes it so much easier than them taking a supplement, right? Or sometimes they don't want to eat certain foods. So this is a great way to be able to support that and boost that um, so that, um, you know, we can prevent that a little bit more. Or if they are sick, that's where, you know, you can use it to boost it and help kick that a little bit faster, okay? So thieves oil is a great one for that. Um, I would also have it going in the diffuser in the home if that's going around, if there's a lot of germs. Another one for sickness type things is, you know, would be a fever. So if a fever pops in or comes up, I tend to go toward peppermint and lemon. Um, and also I'll do a little bit of lavender. But peppermint and lemon, I would actually put on the bottoms of the feet. And then I put lemon down the back of the spine and um, that can help support cooling the body down. And so I've done that a couple times now uh, with him and each time I've seen really powerful results. And you know, fevers are a natural thing with the body. It's gonna happen. We don't need to freak out about it, but it's hard to watch them go through that, right? So that's where um, having these oils can really quickly help support that. And you'll do it consistently. And obviously with peppermint, you'll want to dilute it down. It's one of those hot oils. You won't want them to get it in their eyes. Um, so what I do is put it on the bottoms of the feet and then I'll put some socks on, okay? So that way um, they're not able to get it. Or I'll put it on the back of the neck and put a shirt on, or down the spine, put a shirt on. So those are, are simple little hacks to be able to put on some of these oils that you might want to be careful around with babies because you don't want them to get in their eyes, okay? And when I say babies, I'm saying like six months, older type thing. Um, uh, now, with uh, the teething thing, we used Copaiba. And I did that after a couple months. When he was, I think, like two, three months old is when I started using Copaiba. And the first way I did it was I heavily diluted it down and put it on the bottoms of his feet first because putting on the bottoms of the feet gets into the body in the same way. And Copaiba oil is known as an oil for to help with pain. And um, in Brazil, they actually use it as a sore throat remedy, and they take it internally for it. Um, and it just comes from the resin of a tree in Brazil. And so I would do that, and then that would help. And then finally I worked his way up to the gum line, and I would dilute it down with like almond oil or coconut oil, and I put a drop in, and I put it on his gum line. Eventually I ended up doing it in the mouth, which is what we do today after a lot of using it and feeling comfortable and confident and seeing how my son is with it. And he loves it. He, he like will do it himself, but I'll give him a little drop and he'll like rub it along his gums. And it just is kind of balsamic-y tasting, and um, that will... Um, help support with the pain of the gums and with the teething, okay? So that's something like with that. Um, then there are things like temper tantrums where he like sometimes has moments of like craziness, like a one and a half, two year old, you know how that goes, right? So three year olds. Uh, so I, there's an oil called purification, which I love that one. And it actually helps with emotional type support when it comes to anger and frustration. And so I'll have him smell that, I'll diffuse that in there with the diffuser, or I'll also put a drop on the top of his head. And I'll just drop it right there, and then I'll take some and let him breathe it in. Um, or I'll have it on me so that when I'm holding him, he'll be smelling it. And that tends to really calm him down in a couple minutes. There's another oil called Stress Away, which a lot of um, moms use and love. That's a combination of some different oils that makes a blend up. And um, and they use that for those temper tantrum times where they're just kind of overstimulated or just like crazy people, crazy little people, and uh, to help with that. So I love oils when it comes to emotion, temper, tantrums, like kids not falling asleep. Those are big ones. But then there's things where it comes down to like cuts. So he, like the other day, was using a scooter and he like clipped off half the top of his little toe. And so I immediately went to the oils for that. Now there's some specific oils that I have that are more expensive ones like Hilly Chrysum and Melrose and stuff like that, which I have specifically in my cabinet for when there's like huge, like big issue wounds. But for something where it's just kind of surface wound, I would use something like lavender or frankincense and I would apply it right on it to help cleanse it, but then also to help it heal, support support and healing, and then also support with the scarring. Um, and so those are great ones. We go to the beach a lot. We're outside a lot. You know, Southern California, you know, it's winter time and we're still like naked at the beach and so super blessed to be able to do that but we you know there's times where we'll come home and my son Wesley will be like red and I'm like oh my god I'm such a bad mom I didn't put enough sunscreen on or you know 
I forgot the sunscreen or something like that. And so uh, what I'll do is I'll take some jojoba or almond oil, coconut oil, and I will then take it, put it in my hand, put a couple drops of lavender, rub it around, and then I'll rub it all over his body. And with it by the morning, usually the redness is gone, and then he never seems to peel. So I've done this for myself or for him. We do this like a lot. So actually it's embarrassing how much I do it, but it works. And so that is something that I know supports with skin. Same with like, you know, a, a cut or a burn or something like that. It's a great oil for it. Frankincense is one that um, I use for myself emotionally uh, to support me and ground me. So I'll breathe it in, smell it. I'll even apply it to like my under my nose. So I'm like breathing it in when I'm in the car and he's like going crazy and um, you know, I need to calm down. And so I'll use that for emotion for myself to ground myself when there seems to be lots of chaos around and then I'll have one an oil like the frankincense or the lavender or an oil that works for him like those to help calm him down um, let's see another one that's great so there's an oil called RC and this one's for respiratory so if they are ever a little respiratory or colicky or things like that um, you know that's a wonderful one that you can put on that doesn't have any of the junk that like vapor rub and things might have in them and um, you can make your own kind um, so to help with like sinuses and congestion and things like that. There's an oil called Digize, which Digize, let me see if I have it here somewhere. Yep. Digize is actually for stomach stuff. So you can take it, apply it to the stomach on my son. I might dilute it down, apply it to the stomach and it could help with tummy stuff. So if you have a kid that's a bit having a lot of tummy stuff or not going to the bathroom, that's a great oil for that. And, um, I also recommend chiropractic for that. I know that might seem weird, but you just take like your pinky finger and put it to the like, side of your your eye like this and just feel that. That's how gentle it is for a child's adjustment from a chiropractor. It's not the way we think of adult ones. And actually when his sacrum is adjusted like that, he usually go to the bathroom within like five minutes. And like maybe it had been two or three days before he went to the bathroom and then he'll do that. It's usually the sacrum was out from a fall and then he's able to go to the bathroom. So, but if you're not going to a chiropractor or uh, or, or if you're looking for something just at home, Digize is a great one to help everything start moving there, okay? And as adults, we can actually take it internally or apply it as well, okay? So those are some of the different oils that I would use. I'm trying to think if there's some other things. Those are the main key things that I've used. You know, if you have a baby and it's only a couple weeks, a couple months old, I would be cautious about using the oils directly. One being that I am one that goes a little more cautious on the side of the smells of mom and baby. I think are important not to be interrupted. Our natural smells after birth that are happening with the breastfeeding relationship and things like that, which I don't like to incorporate any other things in, even if it is of natural uh, descent. I don't like to, um, you know, it, unless something is really going on, okay? So there was times, like the first couple weeks after I had my son, where you probably had this happen too, where it's like crying for no reason, and it's just part of being a baby and like the growing pains of, you know, adjusting to being out in the air and not in the womb. And so I, w I, you know, I wish I would have used lavender then or something like that, and I would have, you know, applied it actually to my shirt. Now, you know, for my next child, and that's what I do now with Wesley, but I, if I had been used to using oils before I had him, um, that's what, something I would have done. So instead of applying it right on him, I might have just applied it on my shirt. And that way, or I would take a spray bottle filled with water, put a couple drops of lavender in, and miss the pillow or the bedding or miss myself so that he would smell that and help that calm him. So those are the ways that you could actually use oils in a very gentle way, or you could do it in like a diffuser, okay? So as a mom, you have to decide the best ways. Um, you could take a roller bottle and put some coconut oil or something in it, heavily diluted down, put a couple drops of the oil like lavender or frankincense or something like that that would help with like skin stuff that happened or a boo-boo or you could call it the boo-boo roller and you could rub it on them and and so it becomes a real like part of your lifestyle my son now he like asks for it for me to put on lavender before he goes to bed he like demands it and he's like hmm my feet my feet the oil so um it just becomes a natural part of your day to day, day life as you get into it more so those are different ways that i use essential oils on my son i hope that was really helpful for you and i would actually like to offer if you'd like to learn more ways on how to use oils. 
that I'm going to invite you to a webinar that I have that you can join in on and watch on your time that's all about more detail of essential oils, okay? And I'm going to get into more of like the different types of things to really understand how to use them and where to get them and things like that. So if you would like to, hop on. You're invited. I would love to have you. You got this. I know it might be a little overwhelming or confusing sometimes as a mom, motherhood, as new things come up. I know we're all busy, but I know that you'll have a lot of fun on it. I can't wait to hang out with you some more. So hop on and click the link to be able to join in on the webinar and watch it and with me and let's have some more fun. All right, good. I'll talk to you guys later. Thank you so much for joining in on this version, this uh, episode of Minus Matters educational series and I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Take care.